So by far the most requested topic for me this week was to talk about the entire mess that's happening with the Ace family. At first I was a little bit skeptical, but after looking into it, I realized, wow, this is a massive dumpster fire. From new lawsuits to the boxing scandal, now they're having problems with their home again. So we have quite the video to get into. So hey, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new video. Hope you guys are doing well. But we're gonna start off the video by talking about the lawsuits which have now been filed against the Ace family. And it's not just one, there's multiple. So Catherine McBroom has allegedly been sued for $30 million following the fall of 1212 Gateway, a beauty company Catherine owned together with another company by the name of TBL Cosmetics. According to the filed paperwork for Catherine's lawsuit filed by TBL Cosmetics, she reportedly owes $30 million in punitive damages. That's not T-ball anymore. That is major major league amounts of money. So what the hell did she do is my question. And while apparently she tried to do a hostile takeover of the company, which ended up backfiring, clearly. Imagine trying to take over a company in like a hostile manner and then it not working out. That's so embarrassing. Cause yeah. you're trying to be the bully and then, you know. That's like Bill Ackman trying to take allergen. No one got that. Bill Ackman tried to hostile take over it with another really shady pharma bro company. And it didn't work out? No, it backfired tremendously. And the company that he tried to like buy it with, they got exposed and then they got, they went bankrupt. But an insider article says this, the complaint alleges on the August 7th, 2020, Catherine McBroom signed a contract with TBL to create 1212 Gateway, a premium skincare line with ethically sourced ingredients. Oh, hell yeah. Even the makeup buzzwords are in the lawsuit. But continuing, the report claims that the contract gave TBL the responsibility to perform day-to-day -day management, including running online sales and portals and accounts, while Catherine would be the public face who was responsible for marketing the brand to her followers. Under a section of the initial compliant titled Catherine McBroom's Attempted Coop, TBL alleges that soon after 1212 Gateway begun to grow and exceed its financial expectations, Catherine conspired with her family, friends, and other underutilized members or idol of her entourage to stage a takeover of 1212 Gateway Gateway's management. Catherine, whose attorney did not immediately return a request for comment, denied each and every allegation in the complaint in a July 9th court filing reviewed by Insider. Specifically, Catherine's attorney denied that TBL sustained any injury or damage or harm as a result of Catherine's actions and that TBL gave her consent for all acts and occurrences alleged in the complaint, which TBL denied in the subsequent response. But they go into more detail by saying the complaint says that Catherine gained access and changed the passwords of the prime primary email account, website, GoDaddy account, Shopify account, Instagram profile, and other social media accounts. So she basically just locked out their partner. That's kind of low key funny, just a little bit. Even the GoDaddy account, girl, she's got time. <laughs> like. And this is a business partner where they're most likely transacting like millions of dollars with. Not the best thing to do. I wouldn't call that a chess move. <laughs> like, excuse me, what are you even doing? I kind of understand her. Why? I feel like if you- Why would they do that? If you don't know- It just know, doesn't make sense. She doesn't know the consequences. She's feeling petty. They're making money. Why try to mess with that? I don't know. Do we know her astrological sign? That well, could explain things. Oh my goodness, shut up. <laughs> Your Honor, my client is just a Virgo. <laughs> But continuing on, it says the plaintiff claims that Catherine caused the company immediate damage when she allegedly took over the accounts. After taking sole control of the website, Miss Broom caused it to crash for two straight weeks. Nice. <laughs> Why? I don't see the pro. Where's the pro of doing this? This does not make sense. Why would you sabotage your own business that you apparently owned half of? Or I don't know if you owned half, but it was a joint venture, so I'm assuming you owned close to half. Why? It's safe to say that Catherine sounds like an awful business partner. And like, this is not even the only shady practice the Ace family has done. I mean, we've covered it quite extensively throughout the years. You have the whole situation that happened with the Urban Trademark, but that whole situation happened when they allegedly stole his ice cream truck idea or his vintage ice cream shop merch pop-up idea. And then he also had his own like special like Go bands, which they also completely ripped off. And the only thing the Urban Trademark could really do is just shine light up on it because no normal person can afford to take decades millionaires to court. But now they tried to steal a company from an established business that apparently can afford to take them to court. And we're not even finished with this dumpster fire because that's only one of the lawsuits. So the next one is the Ace family's former landlord are also suing them for $65,000 for breaking their contract early and failing to pay rent. Now, I don't know for sure, but I would speculate and say this could be the landlord that owned the home that got broken into. And I say broken into with quotation marks. The whole situation looks sketch. We 
haven't really gotten a confirmation that it was either real or fake. There's just so many red flags with it. Like the, the main red flag being the group photo for the thumbnail where Austin, Catherine, and the kids were huddled up posing for a thumbnail beside a smashed like glass door, which I'm assuming would be the way the intruder got in and out of the house. I feel like that's a little traumatizing to put your kids through. Hey, quick, let's have a quick family photo shoot by the entrance of what could have been awful if we were home. It, 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 what the f it just doesn't make sense. I would want to think that's fake. Either that or they just were like, we got broken into, let's really milk this for views. It's either one or the other, both look weird. You know how usually when something like that happens, you do take pictures though of everything so you yeah. can show the cops. Imagine them giving those pictures to the cops and they're like, uh, okay, <laughs> I see the door is smashed, but why is your whole family- <laughs> Posing in front of it. Posing. Uh, thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbnail. And yes, this is slightly <laughs> facetuned. <laughs> And now for the, the big kicker, or well, there, there's two big kickers left. There's the whole house, which we'll cover later, but for the bigger kicker, you have the uh, Social Gloves event, where it's now been made public that Austin owns the company that created the event, but nobody's gotten paid. And as you guys know, I was there. I was somehow invited. I don't know why, <laughs> especially where I have a clear history of uh, dunking on Austin's mistakes throughout his career. So I have no idea why I ended up getting invited out there. But the arena was definitely not full, which made me question, why are they hoping hosting it in this arena to begin with, because that rent could not be cheap. I mean, they even had like private chefs in the boxes for like the creators and for whoever businessmen they wanted to schmooze or something. They were really going all out. I even got Social Gloves merch. Yo, no way. I got a Live X Live X Social Gloves Battle of the Platforms snapback. That'll be a trinket for the future. But back to what I was saying, they really went all out with the event for nothing, it seems like, because uh, it's now reported that they lost $10 million hosting that event. I did eat a lot of uh, shrimp cocktails. <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> they lost $10 million because you ate too many shrimp cocktails, Anna. <laughs> That's, that's all your fault. No, but I'm saying they had so much food. There was like an abundance of food. <laughs> I'm sure the rent and the fighters and the performances were the big ticket items, not the shrimp cocktails you consumed. But that's really sad though, because I have never had such bad secondhand embarrassment as I did watching DJ Khaled perform there. Have you ever seen no one give a f about someone as much as you saw no one give a f about DJ Khaled. Everyone was there for YouTubers. No one cared about DJ Khaled. I actually felt bad. Like I just started chanting whatever he was asking people to chant out of pity. I was like, we the best. Get him, Tiger. I felt bad for him. It was like a talent show with the kid that doesn't know how to sing but is trying. That was literally DJ Khaled. An article from Dexerta reads that the Ace family's Austin McBroom is facing further scrutiny after a report from Billboard confirmed that Social Gloves, a trademark owned by McBroom, was at a whopping $10 million in the wake of Battle of the Platforms, YouTubers versus TikTokers boxing event last month. The report also claimed that Social Gloves had received backing from two significant names in the NBA, one of them being nine-time NBA All-Star James Harden. Legal reps for Harden, TikToker Bryce Hall, and McBroom are currently seeking revenue generated by LiveX Live, the platform that hosted the event's broadcast with Simply Greatness Productions filing a lawsuit against the streaming partner. The Battle of the Platforms reportedly only sold 135,000 pay-per-view packages, a far cry from the half a million it would have needed to sell just to break even. While Liga reps are looking at LiveX Live, others are turning a critical eye towards Austin McBroom, who allegedly signed off on a hefty budget without properly promoting the event. But to make everything worse, Austin has responded to all of this in a Hollywood Fix interview. Because that's the only logical place to go to when you have to address the fact that you owe people millions of dollars. Well, the problem with this interview is it left me with more questions than answers. So let's see it. How's everybody doing, man? Talk about it. I first want to say I appreciate everybody who came to the event. It means the world to me, man. For those people who were there, you guys know how much of a success it was. It was, it was an amazing feeling, great event. Yeah. Turnout was amazing. Um, but let me go ahead and explain a little bit, because obviously- Why is he selling the event to us? We already know how the event was. We were there. He's talking literally like a car salesman. 100%. <laughs> for, the past, for the past couple of weeks, I've been used as a punching bag. I've been having to bite my tongue for several reasons. One reason is I didn't want to be sued. <laughs> but now that the lawsuit is filed against LiveX Live, Social Gloves is suing LiveX Live uh, for several reasons. Um, obviously you guys know 
the two rumors that have been going around, and it sucks because nowadays on social media, rumors are just people saying he say, she say. No one really knows anything, right? So the two rumors are Social Gloves is bankrupt, which is cap. It's false. It's not true. Everyone that was at the event knows that there was probably like 20,000 people there. Just at the gate alone, we probably made three or four million dollars. Austin looks so panicked here. Again, I was there. Here's a picture of the event. The Hard Rock Stadium can hold up to 65,000 people. Does this look like it's roughly 30% full? Doubt. But he claims he made like three to four million dollars off of ticket sales, but where's the rest of the money supposed to come from? Like pay-per-view? So allegedly from sources that we heard earlier, they said that they sold 135,000 of those. So 135,000 times 50 is like 6.7 million dollars. Yes, I used a calculator for that. But that still isn't enough money to pay the fighters. Because wasn't Bryce Hall supposed to make like five million dollars just from entering the ring? So the pay-per-view sales would be going to Bryce majorly if he was actually gonna get paid like he was promise. Actually, I think it was five million if he won and then something less if just for entering really? one to two million. So millions of dollars yeah. and he only has 6.7 million allegedly. But that is if those numbers are correct because we don't really know what the pay-per-view numbers are yet. And then you have the cost of the total event like rent and paying for all of these artists who showed up, which could not have been cheap. So it really seems like he dug himself a hole with this one. Yeah. We're not even talking about pay-per-view numbers. We're not talking Damn. about we're not talking about brand deals. We're just talking about at the event. Keep going. So Social Gloves is not bankrupt at all. Keep going. Okay. The second thing is saying that fighters did not get paid. Yes, fighters have not got paid yet, including myself. But that is because LiveX Live. So let me break down LiveX Live and how Social Gloves works, right? Just in case the fans don't really know how boxing events happen, right? So you got Social Gloves, which is the promotion company that put together the event. Right, that organized the fight, that put together the event. LiveX Live is the live stream partner. In order for an event to take place, you need a live stream partner. Right, everyone thinks that Social Gloves just did everything. No, Social Gloves partnered with LiveX Live, who live streamed it and collected everybody's money. Right. So the reason why the fighters haven't got paid yet is because LiveX Live has been holding on to all the funds. They have not paid Social Gloves one penny. And that's why Social Gloves is suing LiveX Live. So essentially LiveX Live is sitting on the pay-per-view money, which leads me to ask who is LiveX Live and why did Austin agree to work with them in the first place? Like where did this partnership come from? So you couldn't speak and, on it and, before? And I couldn't speak on it before just because I didn't want to be sued. Yeah. I never, I never mentioned LiveX Live not once until today wow. because I was able to now. So what's and, your and message very... to Bryce Hall because he's talking legal action? No, he was saying his legal team is involved. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've been talking with the fighters. Everyone's understanding. They all know the situation, especially Bryce Hall, since he was paid the most. He's actually been with me through the process. He's been hearing conversations. Are you guys know, cool and, now? And it, me and Bryce, yeah, we hella cool. Um, okay. But it's unfortunate because no one really knows the number of pay-per-view buys we did. Okay. Everyone knows how big the event was, right? You got, you got. You got some creators like Logan Paul saying we did 100,000. Obviously, he's going to throw dirt on it because he sees me as a threat. He's in the same field I'm in, so it makes sense. I'm not mad at him. It's going to happen, and it's a part of the game. Um, then you got other creators like KSI saying we did 300,000. So no one really knows. Right. We, on the other hand, we got Gibb, who's one of the fighters that was in the event. He heard we did over 2 million pay-per-view buys, and that was in the locker room. See, now I really want to see the numbers, though, because, I mean, like, if the numbers were really good, I'm assuming they would just would have shown the numbers, everyone would have gotten paid, people would have been bragging about it, of how much of a success the event was, and then Austin wouldn't have to be holding a press conference in front of the Hollywood Fix here. But I'm assuming the only reason they would want to hide numbers is because the numbers were not great, and they couldn't afford to pay everyone out, so they just went into hibernation mode. I don't know. How do you authenticate it? You know, that's what I'm saying. Receipts. Exactly. So that's yeah, why the lawsuit receipts. is taking place. Yeah. Well, and so through time, we're going to find that. How long do you think it'll take for the fighters to get paid? Hearing from me, straight from me, the fighters will be paid before the next event. The Social Gloves 2 is coming very soon. Please don't tell me that Austin's making another event to pay off the first event. Bro, I know I met the Tanacon guy at the Social Gloves event, but I had no idea he wrote the business plan. That was a joke. But this sounds crazy. Don't announce another event until you've paid everyone from the first event. Austin McBroom is about to turn into the influencer Bernie Madoff if he isn't careful here. I mean, no wonder he's cashing in on his fans by selling a How to Become a Millionaire course, which you have to pay $50 a month month to because it seems like he's a little desperate here I'm just thinking about it what happens if you don't win the lawsuit if I don't win the lawsuit that's not that's that's not gonna happen I'm winning the lawsuit because there's several facts yeah and those low pay-per-view numbers just don't make any sense you know what they try to claim they try to claim that the UK only brought in 5k buys you're telling me that the biggest creators in the UK give 
Deji, even KSI was promoting the fight. You telling me those three biggest creators only sold 5K tickets? Well, I mean, it's hard to say. Like most of my friends just waited for all the content to come out so they could see it for free. Not too many people wanted to pay the $50 to watch it. And I think in the UK, it was like 50 pounds, which is $58. Like normal people don't want to pay $58 to watch something online when they could watch something online for free because they're already paying for Netflix and all their other subscriptions and YouTube, which you guys are YouTubers and normally YouTube content's free. So I wouldn't be surprised if they only sold 5,000, but it does sound low. But with all this, they're in a dumpster fire of a mess with two massive lawsuits, one smaller lawsuit, and then you have the whole thing with their $15 million home that they allegedly may be foreclosing on. I feel like so much of this could have simply been avoided by vlogging and not buying a $15 million palace in the most expensive area to live in the US where taxes are above 50%. These people have like 20 million subscribers on YouTube. They don't have to prove to anyone, but it seems like they're falling into these dumb money traps because they're simply just trying to show off. Building the biggest house they could buy, putting on a massive boxing match just because KSI and Logan Paul did it, trying to take over a skincare company because owning a large portion of it wasn't enough. They seem to be just getting in over their heads when they don't even need to do that in the first place. Like they are set for life or they should be set for life. But for some reason, they're just doing all this extra stuff, which seems like is creating a massive headache for them. Oh, and some more information just dropped right after we pretty much finished editing this video, so I'm just gonna drop this in here. But apparently, LiveX Live responded to Austin's little press conference he held in front of the paparazzi by suing him for a hundred million dollars. I'm kind of speechless at that. Best of luck to this man. Like, I can only imagine how much stress this is going to cause his family. I hope he has liability insurance, if liability insurance would even cover him for that much, because now the Ace family is roughly being sued for a total of $150 million. I don't think think any creator has ever been sued for this much ever. Even though they've done a lot of stuff that I just do not like, but I'm not preying on these people's downfall. Like I do hope they succeed. I hope they win their lawsuits because I don't want to see them having to fork out like $40 million. But those are my thoughts. What do you guys think of all this? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, I welcome you to my channel. It'd be awesome if you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.